Father in heaven, who at the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan proclaimed him your beloved son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Grant that all who are baptized into his name may keep the covenant they have made and boldly confess him as Lord and Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God in glory everlasting. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. But here is my servant, the one I uphold, my chosen, who brings me delight. I've put my spirit upon him. He will bring justice to the nations. He won't cry out or shout aloud or make his voice heard in public. He won't break a bruised reed. He won't extinguish a fake, a faint wick, but he will surely bring justice. He won't be extinguished or broken until he has established justice in the land. The coastlands await his teaching. God the Lord says, the one who created the heavens, the one who stretched them out, the one who spread out the earth and its offspring, the one who gave breath to its people and life to those who walk on it. I, the Lord, have called you for a good reason. I will grasp your hand and guard you and give you as a covenant to the people, as a light to the nations, to open blind eyes, to lead the prisoners from prison and those who sit in darkness from the dungeon. I am the Lord, that is my name. I don't hand out my glory to others or my praise to idols. The things announced in the past, look, they've already happened, but I'm declaring new things before they even appear. I tell you about them. Hear what the spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Ascribe to the Lord you gods, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength, ascribe to the Lord the glory to his name, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters, the God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf, and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord splits the flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees ripe and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. The Lord shall give strength to his people. The Lord shall give his people the blessing of peace. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said, I really am learning that God doesn't show partiality to one group of people over another. Rather, in every nation, whoever worships him and does what is right is acceptable to him. This is the message of peace he sent to the Israelites by proclaiming the good news through him, through Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. You know what happened without Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism John preached. You know about Jesus and Nazareth, whom God anointed with the Holy Spirit and endowed with power. 
Jesus traveled around doing good and healing everyone oppressed by the devil because God was with him. We are witnesses of everything he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him up on the third day and allowed him to be seen, not by everyone, but by us. We are witnesses whom God chose beforehand, who ate and drank with him after God raised him from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. At that time, Jesus came from Galilee before the river so that John would baptize him. John cried to stop him. He said, I need to be baptized by you, and yet you come to me. Jesus said, allow me to be baptized now. Good morning, everybody. Uh, so here we are in Epiphany. Epiphany is a word from the Greek, and it means revealing, or for our purposes, Christ being made manifest in the world. Epiphany calls us to look beyond the surface of people or spaces to discover that the thin places we might be looking for could be right next to us. Four stories related with the season of Epiphany are, and you've heard them all, are the visit of the Magi, the wedding at Cana, the transfiguration of Jesus, and then today we hear about the baptism of Jesus. I don't know if I've said this to you before, but one of my favorite sacraments, or maybe my the favorite sacrament of mine of the church, is baptism. Um, particularly when kids are being baptized. Some are excited in good ways, some are not so sure, and some are going to be asleep, at least for a minute. No one in the nave there knows how kids were going to respond. Today's not any different. Not Bo, who will be baptized in a few minutes, or his parents, Molly and Stephanie, or his big sister, Elliot. But you know, it doesn't matter how the kids react, because all baptisms are beautiful. Christian baptism takes many forms and can occur at various ages, depending on the denomination and the theology. But the end result is the same. I was 13 or 14 when I was baptized. Um, as y'all know, I grew up Southern Baptist. I remember walking down into a huge fiberglass tub that was under the choir loft. I didn't even know it was there. And being dunked backwards into the water, um, I don't remember how many times I was dunked but I remember coming up gasping for air. I also don't remember there being any discussion of what baptism meant. What I've learned since then is that through our baptism, there are a number of things that begin to take place. First, with baptism, our process of transformation begins. We start the process of moving out of the religion of empire and begin moving into and being part of the religion of creation. We start what Paul calls putting on the mind of Christ, but we are only beginning that transformation process, and I don't expect the process to end anytime soon. Second, with baptism, we state publicly that we want to become a part of a community of faithful people committed to each other through Jesus, through love. And third is that with each baptism, we as a community are being reminded once again what it means to share the good news and to remember that we're not doing this on our own. I'm also struck this morning by the use of the word righteousness. Matthew sets the stage with John telling Jesus that he, John, needed to be baptized by Jesus and not the other way around. Jesus responds by saying, let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Now, interpreters and scholars debate the meaning of the phrase to fulfill all righteousness, especially, especially since the word righteousness carries a number of connotations. 
we often seem to think about righteousness in terms of personal piety. And while this is one aspect, it really doesn't capture the other more important aspect of the word. If we don't understand that Jesus is reintroducing something with his use of righteousness, I think we reduce Jesus to someone other than a threat to the culture in Rome and in particular in Jerusalem. Dr. Brad Braxton writes that righteousness also signifies God's saving action in the world. We might even, in a narrow sense, translate the Greek word for righteousness as justice, and that makes a lot more sense to me. Righteousness encapsulates God's passionate commitment to set things right, to set the things that are wrong, set, excuse me, to set right the things that are wrong in society. In other words, Jesus is using righteousness simply to mean justice. Our reading from Isaiah today describes righteousness or justice as to be able to open the eyes that are blind and to bring the prisoners out from the dungeon, out from darkness. But justice is more, and we will all commit to that more in a few minutes when we say that with God's help, we will persevere in resisting evil. And whenever we fall into sin, repent and return to God. We will commit that we will proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ. We will commit to seek and serve Christ in all persons, I would add all creation, loving your neighbor as yourself. And we will commit to strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being. This is the work God is calling each of us to through our baptism, the work of ushering in the reign of God, righteous actions all. Reciting the commitments in the baptismal covenant is, is a commitment to the continuing transformation process that started for each of us at our own baptism. This process doesn't have an end. I like, no, not like, but I need to be reminded of this ongoing transformation process at work in me from time to time throughout the year. But I'm also reminded that I'm not in this process by myself, that we are engaged together through our baptism and to this specific community of faith at St. Michael's and throughout the world with other communities and enable us to serve as the presence of Jesus in the world. It's through baptism that we hear God's voice say to each of us, each of us, this is my child whom I dearly love that I find happiness in. Amen. Oh